a villain in Venice, Jane of the Air Book One, a steampunk detective and aviatrix, and part-time spy. Available now. All profits to the NHS. Scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Oh, it feels like a while. So, what do I talk about? Well, of course I'm going to talk first about Callan from Big Finish. Yes, I know some of you out there are going, oh, he's not talking about Doctor Who, oh, I'm not going to listen. Well, I am going to talk about Callan. I don't care, because this simply rocks. I mean, seriously. Can I just say, Volume 1 was so long ago that it was actually two jobs ago for me. Now, Callan is also the TV series that has currently just come onto BritBox. So if you're interested in the whole feel of the series, nip over there and watch Edward Woodward in the role that basically made him. It's brilliant. It's a gritty, dark... It's kind of the anti-Avengers. It's exactly... How you kind of imagine spying in the early 1970s to have been cramped, not very well funded, not very interesting. And yes, Callan on the TV is superb. But what they've done here is the son of the original writer, and I'll talk about that in a minute, has taken some of the original short stories and converted them into this. So they all fit into the same universe. You've just got different actors playing the parts. Just like you would have somebody different playing Richard III. You've got the same basic character, but you've got slightly different takes. Now, voice-wise, you could be mistaken for going, actually, this is just Edward Woodward. He's superb. Which he is. But look, here's some synopsises. Because in this box set, we get four stories. And they're all cracking. But... Let's deal with them one at a time, because obviously you've got the downtrodden, very, very good killer, that is, David Callan. But you've also got Lonely, the person who he was in the prison with. And then you've got Perhaps, and I will say this without any reservations whatsoever, the single best performance that Nick Briggs has ever done in any big finish, where he plays Hunter. Callan's boss. It's just great. It is by far the best thing he's done, and I include every single Dalek performance, and many of which I hold in massively high regard. But I really, really do rate his performance as Hunter. If you were bringing Callan back on TV, he would just be the person I'd cast straight off. Also, you have to remember that this was made under lockdown, and If you had to guess, you just couldn't tell, even remotely. Some people were in garages surrounded by, well, mattresses, and you know what? None of it, none of it is noticeable. That is the true power of audio. So what have we got? Now, every single Callan story is called The File On. Now, these stories were all written uh, for the Sunday Express short stories by... Well, James Mitchell. That's the Sunday Express as a newspaper. And Peter Mitchell's converted these short stories into, well, four cracking dramas that would have appeared on TV. Obviously, he's fleshed out the characters, he's expanded everything. But we're presented with some, well, file on a difficult don. One sentence synopsis. The cap and gown meet the gun and bullet when Callan visits the Dreaming Spires to protect a codebreaker. You don't need any more description than that. It's kind of Callan does in the Spectre Morse, only it's 1970. Yes, the bickering that takes place is brilliant, and, best of all, 
This is the first of two references to Callan's hobby. He collects model soldiers. What we'd describe these days as wargaming. Yes, he's not exactly into Warhammer 40k, but as that wasn't invented for another 15 years after this, perhaps 17, well, that's fine. This is where military reenactment kicks in, because the guy is a military historian. Amateur, of course. The thing that runs throughout Callan, for me, that makes it better than, well, better than Bond by far, but also better than the Michael Caine stuff, that obviously it has similarities with, is that at its core, it's the British class structure, especially in the late 60s and early 70s when it was trying to redefine itself and reassert itself. And it matters a lot. These are the people who were born into power. There is an argument that in this country, this reasonably Great Britain, that it is class that we've allowed to keep us in our places. It has been used and reused and abused by everyone involved in it. The education system has been used to keep us all in our place. Now, I'm from a place called Wall's End. James Mitchell and Peter Mitchell are both from the northeast. They're both within, well, spitting distance of where I'm from. And the chip on our shoulders about class, well, you could see it from space. And that's what comes out in spades here. And that is what allows the Hunter character and all of the Dons and everything else to really come to the front. The fact that David was denied a university education, the sort of thing that he could have had all the way through the 60s, 70s and 80s, right up until, well, public funding for universities was cut and removed and you had to start paying fees, is really noticeable. He would have been a very different person. And that's just the background for this story. This story that's got Bletchley written all over it. Then you've got File on a Morning Mother. Callan and Mears are investigating the mysterious death of a scientist at a top research centre when they discover Hell hath no fury. This is clever. It uses many of the themes and recurring themes. Oh, don't make me say the word memes. Don't. It's alright, it's past. Of the 70s. You've got, oh, is a female of the species just as deadly as the male? All that nonsense. All of that stuff that was kind of groundbreaking for the time, but really now you just kind of go, yeah, fair enough. It's all dealt with and looked at. Some great female performances going on here as well, not just the male characters. That is a problem with adapting something that is so, well, old and of its time. Because there were so many male characters Introducing more female characters into the mix is not just necessary, but it's important to make these stories more relevant. And of course, the existence of a homosexual character in this is dealt with in a similar fashion to how it would have been dealt with on TV. Remember, homosexuality had only been legal for a matter of years, not even decades. And this is legal, not even not frowned upon, not even part of society. We have come a long way in a relatively short time, and we do tend to forget this. File 2.3, an elusive engineer. This is your international ITC, gad about Europe kind of story. And yes, it takes place in Spain, but it doesn't have the feel of any of the, say, international unit stories that Big Finish do, or anything else. But the thing that's beautiful for this particular box set takes place here. It's an almost silent moment. Callan is attacked in the bathroom. He's come out of the shower. Now, when you were watching this on TV, you'd see what was going on. There would be no need for visuals. The brave move here is that Big Finish know that we've uh, taken part, we've, we've dedicated ourselves to experiencing this storyline. 
and these audios so that we're not going to just be distracted for a moment. This is not a Radio 4 afternoon play where moments of silence are frowned upon. This is atmosphere. This is a whole world created, an audioscape, if you wish. And then, of course, somebody explains later on what's happened because nobody's really that brave. But you need to know 100% what has gone on. And that's because of the pacing of the original Callan stories. That's what makes this story and all of this box set feel so real. Again, after that, you've got File on an Angry American. The CIA plans to execute a double agent on British soil, and Callan is sent to make sure the target's wife doesn't get caught in the crossfire. There's lots of extra layers going on, the sort of thing that really pays off with your attention. And of course, Hunter's characterization again, just demonstrating the difference between the us and the them and the American outlook on the world. I truly love this Callan box set. I can't get enough of it. I really genuinely hope that there's going to be another series. Because, well, Frank Skinner's Lonely is great. But Callan, well, big finish on rightly to be proud of this. Please. Can we have some more? Go away. Listen to the trailer. And don't just judge it because, oh, it's not really sci-fi. It's not really my cup of tea. This is what Big Finish, A, do well, and B, should be allowed to do some more of. And they'll only do more of it, given that we are, of course, a capitalist society. If we buy it. So look at it, consider it, and pay up your cash because it's a cracking box set. So until next time, be seeing you. From Big Finish Productions, Callan, Volume 2. Your scotch, was it Galahad? Up yours, Lancelot. Well, this is nice, isn't it? <sighs> what are we doing? Uh, Socialising. Well, I mean, turning over birds' drums isn't nice, Mr. Kellen. But consider this, you'll be a peeping Tom who's hundred quid better off. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Hunter's instructions, only you and I are to see the file. It doesn't leave the room and the door must be kept locked at all times. It doesn't say anything about Shin Bet. Shin Bet. There are Israeli equivalents. They're as good as any in the world. Tough, dedicated. Oh! <laughs> the welcoming committee. St Giles College, Oxford. There's a conference of historians there. Which one do I kill? <laughs> you okay? The thing is, Hunter, I want a guy knocked out in the UK. Did he just say that he wanted to come to England to kill somebody? Move it, Toby! Look out! The Jag's coming past on your right! Purdy shotgun. Big thing like that can make a terrible mess of a small flat like this. It would make a terrible mess of you. It's pointing straight at your midriff. There's always the possibility that you will fail. Then I'll die. Big finish. We love stories. Brace yourself! We're going into the ditch! That was the Tin Dog Podcast. Available on Spotify, iTunes, Acast, Stitcher and wherever good podcasts are found. Get early access to content by subscribing to the Tin Dog Podcast YouTube channel. You can support the show at patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on Twitter at tin dog podcast or email tin hyphen dog at hotmail.co.uk. All of the things discussed are the intellectual property of others. No infringement is intended. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance.